I would like to uh, remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. And also please be advised, our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T UVerse, the City of Gas YouTube channel, and WMGJ Radio. And first I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. This meeting of the Gaston City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Iva Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolles? Here. Councilman Williams? Here. Worthy? Here. Back? Here. Wilson? Here. Cannon? Here. And Rick? Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Councilman Back to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we're just uh, thankful to be here in Gadsden, thankful for the opportunity to serve you. And Father, we just ask you to bless our conversation and our time here this morning. We thank you for all the things that you do for us. And just bless our city and bless our leaders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting that was held on July the 9th and the Education Recreation Committee meeting that was held on July the 11th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payments of accounts for the week of July 5th through the 11th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Any proclamation? Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion from the council to uh, change, make changes on our agenda for this morning. So move. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to change the order of the agenda, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the changes will in, will be our new business. We will have how new business first. At this time, are there is there any new business? Yes, Madam President. There are two items that I'd like to, to bring up in tandem. Uh, one is a resolution authorizing a tax abatement agreement with Modus Alabama LLC for a new project. And uh, the second item is authorizing an agreement between the city of Gazden and Modus Alabama Inc. I'd second. like to ask that we consider those today. Second. second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider both resolutions today as items of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move for adoption. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt both resolutions, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt both. Uh, at this time, we'll ask the uh, mayor to come forward to discuss the project. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Man, we got a big crowd here. If we had this every week, we'd pass the plates. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We appreciate all of you. Uh, this is a great day for Gadsden and Etowah County, and we're proud to be able to announce the recruitment of high-paying jobs and welcome a company like Modus to our area. Our ongoing investment in infrastructure, education, quality of life has enabled us to compete with other areas to land this important worldwide automotive supplier. We're very thankful for the support and trust of Governor Ivey and the Alabama Commerce Department and for MODIS in locating in this important project in our city. And I'd also like to say special thanks to Frankie Davis, David Hooks with the IDA, and Bill Green. And uh, it's just going to be something really, really big. I say bigger than the, like most things that's happened here in a long time. Thank you. All right. Mr. Uh, Davis. Okay. 
try to be short, but I can't be quite that short, if you'll excuse me. A few, few comments I'd like to make about what goes into recruiting industry, and it takes a community to do that, so I'll be brief. It doesn't uh, take just one person or two people, of course. It takes a community. Thank you for Modus, first of all, for choosing Gadsden, and welcome to our community. Uh, Modus Integrated Technologies is building a new plant here that will bring approximately 100 good paying jobs to the Edwall County area, so welcome. I'd also like to thank Mayor God and the Gaston City Council for continuing to invest in the Gaston Etowah Industrial Development Authority, education, infrastructure, and quality of life issues that enable Gadsden and the Etowah County area to compete for quality, high paying jobs. Thanks, Dan. If you'd stand, Representative Becky Norburn, Gil Isbell, and and Craig Lipscomb, please. There are local house members from this area. <clears throat> Thank you for voting to strengthen Alabama's business-friendly tax code and to invest in infrastructure that makes us able to compete nationally. Also, thanks for supporting the Etowah County Mayor's Association in the recent legislative session. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask the mayors that are here to please stand of this county. This is a Mayor Guyton, you're one of them. <laughs> I, I know you don't like to be on a team anymore. You're not coaching, but you're one of them. Uh, thanks to the Etowah County Mayor's Association for standing together for growth for the cities of Etowah County in support of the Gaston Industrial Development Authority. Now, this is Mayor Wally Burns, and he's chairman of Mayor Southside, Mayor Larry Means of the Talent, and Mayor Guyton. Wally is the chairman of the association, so I guess some of them said, Wally, you can handle this for us. Is that right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh. I'd also like to thank Vince Perez with the Alabama Department of Commerce for his work on this project from the beginning. He worked with other sites, other locations, but was very professional, and Bill Green worked with him, and, and David has of late a lot. Now, the IDA, I'd like for all the members of the IDA to please stand. Yeah. As you can see, we're well represented today. We got educators, business people, and, and whatnot, a few politicians. But I'm gonna single out, which is not a good thing, normally two or three people. And uh, David, I'd like you and Bill to stand too. I want to give special thanks to Bill Green. He, he was like a prize fighter that answered the bell on 15 rounds in this process. And he got tired of hearing my call by my voice in my meetings, I'm sure, <laughs> along the way. But, but Bill uh, had the department by himself with the exception of his board support for quite a while. And, and uh, uh, Modus will be successful because I know their due diligence if they run their business like they do with due diligence, they'll be extremely successful. Bill, would you attest to that? Uh, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I'd like to give a special thanks to David Hooks, who came on board about the first part of April, and he helped with the closing of the process, and as you know, David's director of the IDA at this time. I'd also like to single out Greg Bennett. He helped us with a presentation that we felt like was very important to the company and Greg's done this since 1985 at the inception of this IDA. I promise not to tell you age, but I am, you know. And he was an older fellow then, but anyway. <laughs> I do thank all of you for serving. And then I wanna, that, that's all if you have. <laughs> Normally people that are paid to do this like city employees, do not get any recognition, but in this case, I'd like to thank Eric Wright, 
uh, he, he produced a quality of life video that we feel like was instrumental in this project. Heath Williamson, the city engineer, did extensive work on the project as, as well as Mr. Charles Olegy from outside and also public works for the work they did on the site. Now I'd like to introduce Brent Turner with Modus Integrated Technology. He'd like to say a couple of words if uh, you will allow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Frankie. Uh, in behalf of Modus, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the approval. We're excited to be part of the community and uh, part of the state. Uh, it's uh, real exciting. Uh, me and my family are transitioning down here. We're going to be living in the Gaston area, so we're very excited to be here and look forward to continued working and being an active part of the community and a good community citizen with you guys. So, as my wife says, I'm short and sweet. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, any comments from the council? Yeah. Councilman Williams? Well, one thing I'd like to, to say is thanks to MODIS for, for choosing our great city. We're, we're excited and uh, we're definitely excited about what's been announced today and what's to come in the future as it relates to uh, you being a longstanding corporate partner. So thank you so much for that. Um, I do want to take the opportunity also to embarrass a couple people that are here. Um, to, to kind of put my comments in the form of an analogy, I'd like to just kind of, you know, lend itself to lend it to what it is to, to have a good basketball team. You, you got to have good, good players, good star players, people that you can count on when you need a, a shot made. Frankie Davis is one of those people. Um, he doesn't like to be called out that way. He likes to work behind the scenes and get stuff done, but for years, and I mean years. Uh, Mr. Davis has been that kind of person. We've also been lucky enough to get him some help. Uh, when he's carrying too much of a load, we have an individual by the name of David Hooks who now can serve to make a couple shots for us as well. Uh, that's important. And, uh, and then we've got spot up shooters like uh, Larry Means and Wally Burns, who when counted on can make a shot for us. Um, we're lucky as a city. And we've got a, uh, we've got a decent coach over here too. We're, we're lucky as a city to have, there, there are cities that would die for that kind of team. They would give their left arm for that kind of team. And we're very fortunate to have that kind of team. So um, I, don't, I didn't want us to walk through this process without um, you know, noting and, and, and recognizing those guys who have worked very diligently uh, along with the state uh, because, uh, you know, our local delegation stepped up and uh, did some things both legislatively and just politically uh, to help uh, make this possible. Um, you know, the package that got presented to MODIS didn't get presented because uh, one person made it happen. It was a team effort for sure. So we, we appreciate that and we thank you so much for, uh, for what you've done for this city. And again, um, you know, it's not all, it doesn't all come to fruition if Modus doesn't say yes. So again, thank you so much for saying yes in the end. Thank you, Madam President. Councilman Worthy. I'd just like to say, echo what the councilman was saying. Thank you to Modus for coming to Gaston and thanks to uh, the whole IDA board and Bill Green because you started this process and to Mr. Hooks who came on a little later, but we appreciate all of you. And this goes to show the community that we are working for the betterment of our community. So I just would like to say thank you. Councilman Back. Again, thank you for choosing Gadsden. Uh, we hope you'll find it to be a wise choice and uh, we think that you will. And uh, you know, as a new city councilman, I've been serving for seven months. I get asked a lot of questions like, well, how do you find City Hall and what do you think is going on and things like that? Well, let me tell you what I think is going on. I think Mayor Guyton and his team and this council, there's two new council members up here, uh, have really set the table in many ways for Gadsden to, to be poised for some really good growth and some really strong future. 
Uh, it doesn't happen overnight, and it took uh, the mayor and his team uh, a few years, Frankie and others, and Shane and Lisa Rosser, and I'll probably leave out some names, and I apologize, but from where I sit, Gadsden is really poised for an outstanding future. I encourage young people to move back to Gadsden, which we're having that happen all the time. People are coming home, and there's good reason. We have a really solid foundation financially, and I think we have a really strong future. And I think uh, your company coming here will be, will be the beginning of, I think, five to 10 years from now, we're gonna look back and I think you can be real proud when you're still here and you're looking at us going, you know, I was kind of one of the first ones that uh, launched this, this, this growth. We're perfectly strategically located in the state and the Southeast. And uh, I, there are really, really better days to come for gas. And I'm just excited to be a, 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 a new player on that team. And, uh, and just glad to, to be a part of it. So thank you again for choosing gas and best of luck. And uh, you know, I was just thinking this morning, you know, there's, there's some really good jobs coming for some really fine people that live in Gadsden and Etowah County. And, and really, I'm, I'm really excited about that for, for those people and their families. So thank you. Councilman Wilson. Uh, yeah, likewise. I, the, the one point I just wanna make that I, I think can't be, overstated is how important it is when when putting together strategies like this again like councilman back said i mean we hear from the community all the time you know that we need to develop our riverfront and we're developing our riverfront we hear that we need to attract high paying manufacturing jobs and we're attracting high paying manufacturing jobs you know we hear that we need to invest in our park system and you see the beautiful uh, improvements that have been made to Morana park and to nakalula park um, it really does take a team it really does take a, a, an entire community to make something like that happen like frankie said and um, I, I'll point out a couple of people. Workforce development is so much a part of that. And it starts, you know, to get an organization like this to relocate to Gadsden. This started years ago. I mean, years ago with the infrastructure. I mean, for what uh, I'll recognize uh, Steve Hildebrandt, Tim McCartney for the work they've done on Workforce Development Council. Um, uh, Summer Collins and the great group over there at the trade school and what they're doing to help train our young kids uh, to be prepared for jobs like that. Mr. Bennett and all the work they're doing at the Alabama Technology Network um, and, and that group. I mean, as a small business owner, I personally have benefited from the work that they do. Um, and then, of course, Gaston State Community College and Dr. Lavender and everything they've done to help train our workforce. So when you realize just how many groups and how many organizations have to be involved and how much vision and foresight it takes uh, to lay the groundwork for an announcement like this, it, it started years ago, started a, a decade ago, probably to come to this. So it's an exciting day for Gadsden, and I hope people can um, can maybe stop uh, the criticism for just a minute and bask in uh, in this success, and and it'll lead to many more, I'm sure. So thank you, Councilman Cannon. Good. I didn't think you'd call me or not after we had a little discussion upstairs about this. Oh. I do want to welcome Otis here. I know that Frankie Davis, if any of y'all know him, he won't give up, he won't quit. He's called me a Z in times, tell me what was going on, what's going to happen, and he's just one that won't give up, Frankie won't. And I appreciate that, him and Bill, and David, and everybody that's had something to do with this. And I welcome Otis to the city of Gadsden, and I'm glad your family's coming with you, and you're gonna be buying a house, and. I heard you said you had a bunch of dogs and animals and stuff, so that's right up my alley. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that Here it uh, the people in District 6, where this is located, we really appreciate it. I know it's coming in the city of Gadsden, which Ms. Toes, Council President Toes, always says, but there's beautiful land in District 6. <laughs> <laughs> As always, by the time you get to me, everything's been seen. I know you're you right. Know? But, but I want to thank the delegation from Montgomery. I well, they got on board early, got it set up. I noticed Jenny Shaver from Cherokee County is even here with us. But bringing it on down uh, to the ditches, we're talking about Frankie and Bill Green. You know, you can't beat it. I mean, they work. They really have. And then David comes on board, and here you go. And the IDA board stood behind them, and here we got it. And thank you so much for coming to our city. Absolutely. Thank you. 
the last word. I'm, I'm glad you're here. And what I'm going to say is that you tell your wife, that I said, roll tide. <laughs> That's the reason why she came here, so uh, you're welcome here in the state of Alabama, roll tide. Very glad to have you, and we're very glad to have uh, our guest also in the, in the audience. And also we have, we, we don't want to overlook, because we got some, we have some regulars, so we appreciate you all. Because <laughs> you, you all will come back to us when all of them are gone, so we appreciate you all coming here also. Uh, at this time, we'll go back to our regular agenda. All right. Do you all? Whoa. <laughs> we lost them all. Oh, Madam President, I'm glad we got our regulars. <laughs> Wouldn't be anybody out there. We'd be there by ourselves. Oh, my goodness. That's why you don't want to overlook them. Yeah, that come in Well, at least Jenny's digging with it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Good thing Councilman oh. Back said, now we're left with our season ticket holders. <laughs> <laughs> our, our item uh, beginning on our agenda is a public hearing. This is a resolution or an abatement of nuisance, and this is 509 Davis Street, David's. David Gray and Sherry Gazi. Hmm. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone to speak in favor? Madam President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. We filed our case in October of 2018. Uh, there have been no improvements. The owner did come in last week, take out a homeowner demolition permit. We issued that. I will continue to work with him and monitor that. But I'm asking today for a resolution to abate the nuisance. If he is not complete uh, satisfactorily, then uh, we'll move with the resolution. Thank you, ma'am. What is the pleasure of the council? I move to abate. Second. <laughs> is there any discussion? The only discussion that I have is I agree with Councilman Word that we need a screen so we can show this. Uh, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution or an abatement of nuisance on property located at 318 Nunley Avenue in District 1, Am South, State of Alabama, and the right of redemption of Shirley T. Jennings, being the last known owners. Is there anyone to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone to speak in favor? Madam President, we filed this case in November. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve, and we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. What is the pleasure of the council? I move to obey. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Oh. Our, our next public hearing is a resolution on abatement of nuisance on property located at 301 Overlook Drive in District 3. This is PMP 174 for Parker Investments, LLC, being the last known owner. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone to speak in favor? 
Madam President, this case involves abandoned vehicles. Uh, we have been in court. Um, we've had, we started with several vehicles. We're down to one. Uh, did talk with the owner. He's been unsuccessful in getting his tenants. This is a apartment complex on Overlook. Uh, to, to move those vehicles. We need a resolution to go on private property and have that vehicle towed. I'm asking for that today. Thank you. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to adopt. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution on abatement of nuisance on property located at 706 Sharp Street in District 6. And this is the state of Alabama right of redemptions of Mary Lou Cindy Hollis and certain mortgages in favor of Yvonne Tidwell Ross being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor? Madam President, we filed our case in November. This, uh, this involves a, a house that has been abandoned. There's also a vehicle there we will get. Uh, there've been no improvements, there are no permits. We're asking for a resolution today to abate the nuisance. Thank you. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Okay. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh, those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our final public hearing is a resolution on abatement of nuisance on property located at 2517 Lookout Avenue. This is a accessory building in District 7, State of Alabama, right of Christopher Croft and Lisa Croft being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor? Madam President, this case involves an accessory building, a garage apartment. Uh, we demolished the house there through uh, a resolution uh, eight years ago, we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. Thank you. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next item is a resolution reappointing members to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And this reappoints Tim McCarthy, District 5, and Bob Minner, District 6, for the term expiring May 18, 2022. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. The next item is a resolution appointing member to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. This appoints Charles Trotter in District 4 for a term expiring on May 18, 2020. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 
The next resolution authorizes agreement with Stryker, and this is for the service maintenance on the automatic external defibrillator units for a three-year period ending August 31st, 2022, and the amount per year is $3,340. The clerk will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. We have one abstention. Motion carries to adopt. Our next item of resolu uh, resolution authorizing agreement with Stryker, and this is for service maintenance on the Life Pack 15 unit for a three year period ending August 31st, 2022, and the amount of Per year is ten thousand two hundred and twenty-six dollars. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Something. Sure. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. We have one abstention. Motion carries to adopt. Is there any uh, department reports, committees? Uh, do I have uh, unanimous consent for Representative uh, Jenny Shavers to speak? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Do I have? All right. Would you give your name, maybe even your topic? <laughs> My name is Jenny Shaver. My address is Leesburg, Alabama. I'm so happy to be with y'all today, get to uh, visit with you from the other side. Okay. I miss you guys. Um, I wanted to just uh, be with you today and um, have, have it noted that all the big shots left, yeah. but I stayed here with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Your car was broke down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Good leave. Um, I just wanted to come and talk with y'all today and kind of give you a little update from, from the legislature after our first session. Um, I do not represent any of Etowah County. I have all of Cherokee County, part of DeKalb, part of Calhoun, and part of Cleburne. I'm just sort of a bonus member for, okay. for you guys. Yeah. Being from Gadsden and having worked for the city for nearly 20 years, um, I've still got your back. So I, I've, I try to help you out when I can. And I don't know if y'all have heard, um, you know, one of the very first things we did, actually the first thing after our session started, the governor called us into a special session to uh, consider the Rebuild Alabama Act, um, which was the gas tax. Nobody wants to pay more taxes. I certainly do not. And uh, I was not really happy to have to face that you know, first thing, but that's what I got elected to do, was to consider the merits and of uh, both sides of the issue and to listen to all the all the viewpoints and, and all of the facts. And in that three bill package, one of them, the, the gas tax bill itself was 30 pages long. So um, I think it was very warranted for the governor to address it in a special session because we have upwards of 900 bills introduced in a session. So really to give that particular issue um, the attention that it deserved, uh, it would have been very difficult for us to have really considered it fully if it were in competition with all the other bills that that you know, we were faced, to, faced with. So um, I shut my door and studied it and we had a week of meetings and had all our questions answered and it was being changed on the fly you know, as folks had concerns and, and we ended up with um, a package that, that I voted yes for. And I, I did that for, for a few reasons, even though I, I did have a, you know, like I said, not being excited about increasing any tax but um, I had, of all four of my county commissions, they voted on uh, past resolutions unanimously because they are desperate, you know, for the funding to be able to uh, repair and, and build infrastructure in, in the counties. And so that, that's very telling, I think, when they were willing to uh, go on the record and, and put their names out there and be on the line, you know, to vote, to vote for this. Um, 
Also, um, when people ask me, you know, why did you run for office? Well, I had goals, not all of them legislatively, but um, those of you who know me well know that one of my, my personal goals was to see uh, Highway 411, the completion of the four lane. And it's something that I have personally fought for back before the year 2000, back in 99, and when I was the town clerk in Leesburg, and when KTH was promised, you, you build here and we will finish that four lane because of the, the 200 trucks a day back and forth that um, where they supply the Honda plant in, in Lincoln with the chassis for the Honda Odyssey minivans and now the Ridgeline trucks. So I was there when they were promised that. And, and fought with many of you. And you know some of those are not here today. My former mayor in Leesburg has passed and not lived to see it finished. And our own former JR Countryman council member in Gaston who fought so hard. So that was a personal goal of mine. And I knew that if, if we did not have the resources, there's no way it would happen. And so why did I go to Montgomery? To, to make things happen and get things done or just to say no to everything? And so I knew that to meet my personal goals and, and, and you know, to help our investment for our future, and that was the third portion, um, the third bill in the package was to expand the port in Mobile. There were a lot of rumors being tossed about the half the money was going to the port of Mobile, and that's not true. It's 3.6% of, of the money. And what it does is to allow us to borrow $150 million to be the match for the rest of the funds that Senator Shelby has secured for us to widen that port of Mobile. And it doesn't just impact that area, it impacts the entire state and it is our ticket to the future of expansion of economic development industry. And anything that the state grows or produces, um, when you look at, you've got Mercedes saying, we can't expand anymore until we get an expansion in infrastructure, meaning that port till they can widen it where we can get multiple pandemic ships in there. They call them row row boats where they can just roll those cars right on and roll them off. Um, this expanding our port puts us in, in competition will be one of the top ports in the country. Instead of having to truck our, our exports to other ports, they'll be coming through our state. So how does that help Northeast Alabama? Well, in my particular district, in DeKalb County, which is, DeKalb County is the second uh, county in the, in the United States for poultry production. So within 24 hours of poultry being processed, it's frozen in on a ship to the Ukraine out of the port of Mobile. Um, so anything that expands our ability to export those type of goods, whether it be timber that we grow, cotton, anything we manufacture from cars, talking about coal, um, also, just in the, in the line of Mercedes, down in Heflin, in part of my district, I have a packaging company called Ruskin Packaging, and they make all of the cardboard packaging for the parts that our Mercedes uh, plants make and ship around the world. And so when, when Mercedes expands, they're going to need more packaging, and that's more jobs for my folks in Heflin. So yes, expanding that port helps the entire state. You know, we've recovered from the recession of 2008 fairly well in the state of Alabama. It hurt, but it could have hurt us a lot worse. And we've recovered and we've reached a point of, you know, to grow and expand, we have to have something like this to punch through that ceiling we've reached so that, you know, we can invest in our future. And so that's why I did vote for uh, the governor's Rebuild Alabama Act. Um, part of the first bill was the accountability portion where um, these funds have to be uh, kept separately from other funds, but that's not unusual for cities and counties. We have to do that anyway. But cities and counties will have to submit plans uh, to the uh, Joint Transportation Committee. Sorry, I wind it up. My five minutes is up. Um, there's a Joint Transportation Committee, and the first bill in the package made that committee permanent. It's 12 members from the Senate and 12 members from the House. Um, I was appointed to that committee. As a freshman, I can tell you I was surprised and, and very humbled uh, to have uh, participation in, in such an important committee because this committee will oversee ALDOT and the administration of the Rebuild Alabama funds. And in two different areas, and I'll try to wind it up quickly, in addition to the gas tax and the way it's split, the, the state gets 67%, the counties get 25%, and the cities get 8%. Now, cities may feel like that's not a whole lot, but there's a lot of cities that has federal money 
they have federal money out there, but they couldn't draw it down because they didn't have the match. Um, so this will give them the ability to be able to access other funds. Also, cities and counties can uh, work together on projects where they have uh, projects that would be mutually beneficial. And there's going to be two pots of money from the state's portion. One is $10 million a year. And there's no match to, to these grant funds. That will be administered by the committee that I serve on. So uh, they're working, ALDOT's working on the application process. This is what I want y'all to pay attention to. And I hate it that our engineer's not here today, but I'll get with him later. By September 30th, the application uh, process will be completed. November the 30th is the first deadline for these projects. They'll be awarded in January. Um, there's gonna be a, a second round of um, ATRIP funds, an ATRIP two, and there's a separate committee for that. And that does have a match. Those projects will be in conjunction with state projects, but that'll be $30 million minimum, up to $50 million a year. This is every year. So these are opportunities that cities and counties have to, to get certain projects funded uh, through these different avenues as well, not just the funds that you're gonna get directly from the gas tax. The same deadlines will apply. Their, their committee is meeting and those specifications are being drawn up. So I'm telling you all to give you a heads up, just because I like you and we're friends, um, to be thinking and get your plans together. And there's a criteria set out in the bill. Um, so it takes some of the politics out of it as to what uh, projects are selected. There's certain criteria. One of those criteria is first, lane, first time four lane access to an interstate. And because of that, Highway 411 the finish to complete the four lane project has been chosen as a first year project. After we passed the gas tax a couple of weeks after I got a call from the governor and, and to inform me that um, we, we are getting that as a first year project. So we can expect, I've had meetings with the um, transportation director um, and he has stated that we can expect the bids to be let by, in this, by next spring and be working on it you'll actually see construction and things happening by the end of the year. So I'm so excited about that and so pleased, and I know y'all will be too, because it means so much you know, to the city of Gaston and to Etowah County, just as it does to Cherokee County, to finally have that project completed. So I just hate it that there's some who worked on it so hard that are not you know, with us now to, to share in this victory, because it is a victory for all of us. So very excited about that, and um, I'll, I'm gonna stay in talk with you, but I just wanted to give you a heads up and fill you in on some things going on. And and as always, if, if I can ever do anything for you, um, just let me know. Okay. So when our little paperwork comes across your desk with 759, we know we got the money. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that too. We, we just sent a letter to the governor and, and asking her to make it a, a priority. And even though I'm not in your delegation, you know, it, it is important to me. And it is important to Cherokee Counties um, who so many work in Gadsden and have to travel that and shop. And, and so it is important, you know, to all of us in the area, you know, not just to Gadstonites, but it, it is important to all of us. So I was happy to be asked to, to help and I'll do what I can to make sure that people hear about that project too. Yeah, I've learned uh, uh, Representative uh, Shavers that just having a seat at the table is important. Yes, it it's just nothing but being informed. But we appreciate you, and we thank you, and we thank you for always remembering us. Representative Shaver, I'd just like to personally thank you for your help uh, in this legislative session this year. And I would add that uh, a few bottles of beer get exported out of that port as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's no announcements. Uh, I ask for a motion to adjourn. One, one, announcement, one, announcement, one announcement. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I give you two. Uh, uh, well, we're changing the job fair date from the 20th to the 27th because the uh, Chamber of Commerce is having a uh, business uh, expo. expo that same day on the 20th. So we didn't want to bump heads with them. So it's the same time from 8 to 9 is the skill seminar. And then from... Uh, Nine to one is the job fair at the venue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.